This is Bodh Gaya in northern India. Recently, Clear Vision released a video pack for primary schools. Its production took many months and involved the writing and teaching skills of two mitras, Marty Casey and Meg St. Pierre. Buddhism is one of the six religions that um, well, children in Britain now need to know something about, and that's new, it hasn't been there before. Um, and people have felt unconfident in teaching about Buddhism. Um, often they felt that it's a very ethnic religion and also that it's not practiced in the West. And in the video pack, we've um, hopefully set out, or to do many things, but two of them, one of them would be to um, show people that Buddhism isn't difficult to teach about and we've, we've got a resource that um, you know, makes it very straightforward and clear. And by showing um, the breadth of Buddhist practice, both um, around the world and particularly in the West, um, you know, children hopefully will see that it is um, well, a, a, a living faith that can touch them, that it is something that they themselves could ultimately become interested in and, and begin to practice when they, you know, grow up. The two videos have um, two 20-minute lessons on each, so that, that gives four 20-minute lessons. And they cover Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, meditation and worship. So there's quite um, a full covering of the basic principles of Buddhism, the sort of things that children um, will need to have knowledge about. And um, the teacher's handbook is designed to be um, very accessible for teachers. It opens flat on the desk. It has photocopyable sheets um, so that teachers can copy those sheets and use them with the children. And it has additional information for them so that they've got a little bit more background than the video um, itself has for use in the classroom. Um, really, a teacher who knows very little about Buddhism can pick up this resource and just use it with confidence because um, it's all sort of laid out for them. Scheherazade has been asking herself the same questions. She lives in Manchester, in England. Her parents are Buddhists. On the video, for instance, the first unit is about the Buddha, and one of the children, one of the things children um, have to know about when they are studying Buddhism is the life of the Buddha. So naturally, we cover the four sites, and um, Scheherazade is reading a book and listening to a tape about the life of the Buddha, but it's intercut with incidents in. Um, modern everyday life that that in a way mirror those sights that the Buddha saw and and that in itself has quite an impact on people because it ceases to be something distant that happened to somebody two and a half thousand years ago that doesn't touch their lives now and because becomes something immediate and everyday that they could see and um, we don't make a big thing of that but it's there in the video and I know that it has an impact on people because I've, I've heard them draw breath you know for instance when they uh, they see the hearses turning into the the cemetery. The first shocking sight he saw was a very old man whose hair and teeth were falling out. This sight really upset the prince. He realized that everybody grows old and loses their strength, eventually. The next day he saw a sick person groaning in the street. It was the first time Siddhartha had ever really seen someone sick. Now he saw that to get sick and suffer is part of life. On the third day, the prince saw a funeral procession. He had never thought about people dying, and that he'd have to die some day too. That really shocked him. Some of the feedback that we've had from teachers is that the videos very much address children's spirituality so that, that it's about more than Buddhism if you like and, and um, uh, I found this a very heartening response because even people who say well you know we're not really interested in being Buddhist but there's something in there that touches um, well what it means to be human for the children um, I think that if we've got that across actually we've been very successful so to introduce the people who are going to lead our day, um, Meg St. Pierre and Malty Casey, who may be better known to some of you than they are to me, although I'm pleased to say that we've become good friends in the time we've been working together. Just to emphasise that we're learning from our own learning experience, 
that we're thinking through, uh, yes, what interests us, but what questions are raised for us who may not be within this religion, but who share the human experience and maybe share some of the questions and the puzzles and concerns. And I know that um, there are some of you like me who are personally very interested in this search which um, we understand is there within Buddhism. Um, in the teaching world, um, a very important aspect of promoting a resource is um, training teachers in its use. And um, so one of the things that we have become involved in is in-service training for teachers. And really this has got two aspects. One is um, updating the, the teacher's own knowledge about Buddhism and uh, teachers on the whole have felt quite shaky in this area. It isn't a religion that people know very much about. But teachers then also need to know how they can use that information in the classrooms. So the in-service training for teachers is helping to give them confidence that it is something they can teach about and that is relevant to them and their children. And if both those things are in place, people will teach about it and um, teach about it with confidence. In the afternoon, it is time for work. Some of us help in the kitchen. We only eat vegetarian food here. If we mess about, one of the monks might tweak our ears. A good way to be in direct contact with teachers is actually to have, be part of exhibitions which are mounted in teachers' resources centres. So today is a special day. Um, where all the publishers of religious education material have gathered together and teachers from the schools and this authority will be coming in during the afternoon to view the materials, including ours. Well, we've certainly arrived at the right time in the education scene. Now is the time when the different education authorities are deciding uh, what they're going to have in their syllabus. They will be deciding whether to have Buddhism or not. And one of the important factors in their making this decision is if there are resources on it. So it's really important that we get the news out that there's a very good resource available on Buddhism. So it's really important that you know, everybody in our centre, centres who's got contacts with education to get this news out now, to contact their own uh, education advisor or inspector, to contact their local schools. I see it as a unique opportunity really to um, let a much wider audience know about Buddhism and to meet the Dharma. And in that way, it's very exciting. Um, and if people feel inspired by that, you know, here's a chance to, to get involved, um, either by um, visiting schools or um, centres can have groups visit. But we're helping to create, hopefully, a climate in which um, well, Buddhist values and principles are more widely known and more widely acceptable. And that certainly just has to be a change for the good. Many ordained Buddhists in the West don't live in monasteries or wear robes. They live in houses like this and wear ordinary clothes like Padmashuri. Padmashuri is a member of the Western Buddhist order. Is she a nun or is she a lay person? Well, we've had such comments as it's been the best resource in RE that we've seen. That's a very strong statement. And some have even asked, can we actually produce a, a, a video on other religions, which is, which is very good, except we don't want to do it. <laughs> he smiled as Kisa approached. And what can I do for you? Have you got some mustard seeds to spare, she asked. Slowly, the old man got up and went into the house. Soon, he emerged with a handful of the seeds. Here you are, my young friend.